Lock it up. This this is the epicenter of audio frequency entertainment. I love it. It's awesome. (laughs) Can't get enough of it. Oh, yeah. You guys are the best. Efren and Reed. I love you, love you, love you. The Heffron and Reap Show. Everybody, welcome to the John Heffron and John Reap Interwebs Podcast. Yeah, Guys baby. Talking to each other from their bedrooms across the country. Yeah, like it's a radio show, but it's not. It's called podcasting, which is fake radio shows people do in the bedrooms. What song are you doing? I can't quite understand it. I'm making up, but dude, look what I just found. So right what? before the show, right before the show, right before the show, hold on. I found he found a box. something. John has turned around and he's I digging. I found a box. He found a box. Oh, what's in the box? Like do you have a Do game. you have a way of googling something right there? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, so Google this, dude. I found a whole box of these. Tell me what this thing's worth. Look, look good. What is it? Go, is it? go, Marvel superheroes, Secret War number one. Right there. Found a whole box of comic books. Secret War. Uh huh. Number one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I pulled it up here. It's worth nine hundred and forty-seven dollars, dude. That's awesome. Dude. You just found that? I just found that. Uh, volume wow. two. If it's in mint condition, it says here nine hundred and forty-seven dollars. That's this amazing. Is not, this is like mint. Look at that. There's not even. I even kept it in the little thing. Wow, dude. I got. What do you, mean you I, found it. Where was it? I have a box in my basement, and I go. I think these are all my old comic books. And I just open them. Hey, randomly Dude, this check is great. out. Who cares about Spotify out. and uh, Sound Exchange anymore? You found a new source of income, my friend. Try you this the money. Just try Marvel Superhero Secret War uh, number three. Let's just see what happens. Three. Oh man, number three? Spider-Man's fighting. Wolverine. That's worth. Uh, according to this one, it's worth maybe four hundred and forty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents on eBay. Dude, I, I just found like. That's great. Probably a couple thousand. Bucks what are you going to do with that? Are you going to keep them? Are you going to sell it? I'm probably just going to read them. <laughs> no, I'm selling. How did you not sell them? Look at the box you- came in. You can tell I've had this thing. This thing has made it through grandparents' wow. houses that smoked. This little, you know how it's yellow yeah. and gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many? How many comic books would you say are in there? Is it all? Is it all like Marvel superheroes, or is there any Dukes of Hazard in there? Uh, I don't know if there's any. I have Wolverine. Check out like what Wolverine number one is. Wolverine number one. All right. Wolverine Whoa. number one. Wolverine number one. Uh, according to the web, it's could it could be worth eighty nine dollars or two hundred and thirty nine dollars. I might see different prices up here. Ooh, you've, got, you've got you've got you've got some income coming your way, dude. That's the great. Secret, the secret war ones, I think, uh, were the huge ones. I wish we had more time to talk about that, but we have a special guest today. All right, are you excited for our special guest? Very ex- excited about our special guest. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you might know him as Bo Duke. You might know him as uh, I don't know Superman's dad. The one and the only John Schneider is going to be zooming into this show here in a little bit, and uh, I'm, ex- I'm I'm excited. John, have you ever met John Schneider? I have not. Maybe I will okay. say maybe, but I, if I did, I was a little kid. Okay, um, he's not much older than us, but I was, you know, proportionally younger. Do you than- want me to introduce you to him? Or do you want to just jump in there? I mean, how's this going to work? Uh, you can just, we'll be gentlemen. You can just introduce, because I don't think he, he's going to remember me. I'll say, John Schneider, this is my uh, assistant, John Heffron. He, yeah, uh, yeah. He looks up that. stuff on the internet. He sells yeah. comic books. Um, so it's comic books, we have them on every week. <laughs> it's comic book, uh, comic yeah. book uh, Friday. And he's I never watched one book. episode of Dukes of Hazard. He doesn't know who you are. Yeah, um, 
Yeah. And, okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll introduce you properly. I'll give you some props, dude. Yeah. Cause I think if I remember the, uh, well, I'll, I'll save this story. I'm excited okay. that I have, I saw an eBay for that one that I just showed you it somewhere. You could, you could get it for 10 grand. Okay. So that's amazing. If that's um, true, if I if I'm sitting on forty grand, I need you to sh- I need you to shake that off though, because we got to okay. focus on this guest. Okay, let's uh, it's very it. exciting news, and I'm very happy for you. Okay, but I can't have your mind drifting off to how much money you got sitting behind you. I need you to focus on John Schneider. Okay, <laughs> I will. Okay, um, <laughs> what do you have questions prepared? I know you were going to sell, try and pitch a movie idea to him. Well, I got a couple. I got a couple questions for him. And then I have an idea. I'm going to write the idea down. I hey, guys. I'm just yeah. going to let you know, Mr. Schneider is, is ready to hop in. Oh, let's do it. Well, let's go ahead and play the uh, was you, and I was about guest. ready to just to jump right yeah. in my questions. All right. And then it's for Alan. He's right. Let's go ahead and bring him in. Alan. Yeah, go ahead, Alan. All right. So ideas for... So, hey, John. Oh, hey, John. How are you? I'm swell. How you doing, boy? I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, zooming in. This uh, You're on the Heffern and Reap show. I want to introduce you to my co-host who's sitting up there top left corner. Very funny comedian. Uh, he's been on The Tonight Show several times. We're talking specials on Netflix, Amazon, and a winner of Last Comic Standing as well, Mr. John Heffron. Yeah. Ah, thank you, John. And right before we had you on, I found an old box of comic books, and we were checking out the value uh, of them. And I found that I had some that are worth some money. And normally... Right. If you see a comic book is worth, you know, like 400 bucks, 500 bucks, and you pay right. 10 of 10 cents as a kid, it's not that big of money. But if you're somebody like me who's gone through a divorce and then you find a whole box of something <laughs> that nobody, nobody even knew existed and it was bought pre divorce, somehow that $800 comic book is just not worth $10,000 to me. Yeah, it's that's worth- fantastic. It's worth, it just what, feels what comic, like. What, what comic book is that? What, what do you have there? It was, what was it, John? It was Secret Wars. Oh, you Wars. had uh, Secret Wars, Marvel. Secret Wars. I don't yeah. even know. Oh, that's fantastic. Secret Wars. And you kept that. You kept that. You know, I have this, I have this recurring dream that I still have my, my metal Batman lunchbox with all of my baseball cards in it from 1964. <laughs> And, wow. and they're worth, you know, probably probably the cards I had in my box now are probably worth a million, a couple of million bucks. That's, so it's a, it's a dream, we though. To flip them. We'd flip them for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, wow. I, I remember those those uh, lunch boxes from back then. They were just those cool steel ones, obviously yeah. having you on. I had – I'm trying to think of how old I was when Dukes of Hazard was on. I'm 52 – I was of lunchbox carrying age, I believe, when it first came out. Because I well, had, sure, yeah. yeah, so I had that, and then I had the Steve Austin. But where I got ah. grounded was, for some reason, I'd walk with the, my $6 million man one, and I would throw it as far as I could ahe- ahead of me, and then I'd walk and grab it and throw it, and I wanted to see how many throws it would take to actually make it home and it got busted up and then my parents no longer yeah. bought me steel l- lunch boxes. So you did you did kick the can with, uh, yeah. with your six million dollar yeah. man. But wow. you know, they, the reason why they call it kick the can because a lot of people yeah. will, will kick a uh, uh, can when they yeah and not uh, yeah <laughs> not a twelve dollar lunch box from Kmart. A six yeah. million dollar lunch box. Well uh, our uh, our Dukes of Hazard lunch box was the last uh, this is what I'm told by collectors, the last embossed metal lunchbox. So, you know, our figures were actually, you know, they stuck out yeah. from, the, from the metal. Uh, Later on, they just kind of, you know, lassie and they started making all these things again and they were just flat and they were printed. Well, ours were actually embossed. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, 100 percent it is. I wish I and still it had, had a certain smell, too. 
They had a certain yeah. smell. Those boxes, if you left Usually it in your locker, or, or liverwurst, liverwurst. Yeah, that. and then your your teacher's <laughs> like, "You haven't taken your lunchbox home in four days. Can you get that?" And you're like, oh, "Okay." And, and you then open it, it up. Smell like Clorox, right? Yeah. It like, yeah. A like Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Mr. Schneider, where are you zooming in from today? Are you uh, uh are you in I'm Louisiana? In I'm in Louisiana. Okay. I'm and in I know Louisiana, you guys where, just... where you were not far, not long ago, being yes. uh, hysterically funny. Have you seen it? I sure did. Yes. I laughed out loud several times. Good. Yes. Good. I want to say sir. one of my favorite laughs. Uh, it wasn't a, a scene with me. It was a scene where um, Michael Sullivan and Dane Rhodes, yeah. were, they were playing Tiny and Tim Needham. When they were trying to get into the car and randomly he said, all right, turtle mode. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Turtle, yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I you were there when we filmed that. You were there when we filmed that. I didn't know he was going to do that either. I wondered what the what the hell? What is let's turtle it? Oh my god! Because <laughs> Michael Sullivan uh, gives the appearance of someone that's far more fragile than being able to do that particular move. Yeah, and Dane is strong as an ox, but you wouldn't know that when you look at him. You'd, you'd think, okay. So, folks, what John is talking about is, is Dane turns around and then grabs Michael's arms like this. So they're back to back and then pulls him and then shoves his feet in the window of, of <laughs> Rupert T. Justice's car. And that I'm was going, awesome. Oh I mean, I love too, but <laughs> it wasn't just a quick thing. It was a wide shot. And you stayed on him the whole time. And then, like, he finally got in there and his hat was off. And you could see he was out of breath because that's oh, yeah. to get oh, your yeah. feet like you're basically doing a plank the whole time getting into yeah. the window. <laughs> yep. And, and there's there's a door lock involved, which, you know, no telling where that went. Uh, so it, was, uh, <laughs> right. it was so fun to see and, and so funny when I cut that together. That Those guys are great. I wonder you know, how long nobody has said to me yet. No, it, I don't think anybody realizes that Timmy Needham and the sheriff are the same guy. Really? Wow. Well, then, well we done. Didn't try to hide it. We didn't try to hide it. But I think Dane is that good. <laughs> well, he is playing. I mean, you could tell he's he's doing it differently, obviously. But he uh, that first scene where he comes out and he puts the apple box down and stands on it, and you're like. <laughs> You're uh, yeah, something you? different. You? <laughs> yeah. And what so that right say? away explained Tyrus, the whole thing. Yeah. Tyrus couldn't get out of his gig in New York. He called me this morning. Just go with it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And, that was uh, the only, that was the only bummer for me was I was kind of hoping to meet Tyrus while I was down there for the day. And well, half he I said he'll there. do that. He'll, he'll, uh, that was the first week of his brand new contract with the Gutfeld show. Okay. So he had, they, they were in the mode of, uh, we, we want you here. We want to make sure that you're here. So they, they made him uh, be in New York a couple of days ahead of time just for their own comfort, you know, because yeah. with this whole nonsense going on, nobody knows nothing. So, um, yeah. so he couldn't be there, but he said, please, please let me, let me come and be in the next one. So I, I'm thinking we're going to have Tyrus and Dane uh, in the next one. Okay. You know, arguing about who gets to do what scene. Yeah, right. Well, it was a a great experience, man. I was happy. Uh, I was happy. I was able to do it. I made John Heffern jealous because you know he's like, I want to be in one of those movies. So yeah, I'm always okay. pitching. I'm always pitching reap uh, buddy comedy movies because you know we're we're 50 year old comedians. We we've done super well on the road, but you know you reach an age where no, no one's really looking for a 50 year old for anything. <laughs> So I told Reap, I'm like, I got some buddy comedy uh, things that we're going to do. We're yeah. going to shoot them gorilla -y. And that's what impressed me most about this thing. So when John said he was going to do Poker Run, I remember you we're obviously doing the podcast. He's like, I got to go down to, I believe, Louisiana to shoot yeah. some things. And then I started following you just on um, uh, Facebook. Uh because I think Thank you posted you. something about John and I go, he's one of the funniest and then you do that type of thing. But then I saw how fast things move. So you, you banged out that movie and I'm saying that in a, in a good way, uh, fast enough for me to think John reap, we could do what I want to do. I'm not as intimidated about <laughs> it as I was because this movie from start to finish poker run is done. Right. And yeah, it, how, it seems uh, like you went away yeah. and shot it 
like a couple months ago. Well, we did uh, we did principal photography in something silly like like uh, eleven or twelve days. Wow! But then me and my camera and my you know occasionally I'd go out and we race dirt track. So I'd go shoot some parts of the dirt track race. Right. Uh, I'd go shoot some things. So the 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 I would say eighty percent of the movie took twelve days, and the rest of it took a couple of months just because I had them. So I also right. edit the I edit the movie. So I would I would cut the scenes together and go, this is great, but if I had this, it'd be better. So I'd just go out and shoot it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a it's a uh, it's a really good thing to be the writer editor, right? Uh, and, and I'm not the cinematographer, but I can I can go out and shoot and shoot things as needed. So it's uh, it's actually one of the one of the things that happened because of all the lockdowns and all the nonsense in 2020, we made the, uh, the predecessor to this movie, we made stand on it mm -hmm. and we had a 15, 20 day schedule and all of a sudden everything shut down. So all of a sudden, so whatever I shot in three days, I had to make as much of a movie out of that as I could and then get the rest, like you say, in a guerrilla fashion, just kind of on the sly. Mm -hmm. Right. Good thing about these movies is that the, the the person that has the most screen time other than the car is me. So I can go and, and you know, I know where I am at all times. Well, almost, right. almost. All <laughs> right, right, right. right. And so I, can go out, I can go out and shoot stuff with me um, and, and fill in the gaps. Uh, so it's uh, it, it was a great process. We are doing another one. It's called Double or Nothing. Uh, and uh, this time there's going to be five million dollars on the line, and we'll build. If John, if you're available, both Johns, we'll have you both in. But, <laughs> All uh, right. Your character, your character would come back like off duty or something, and, and uh, <laughs> so it's uh, my favorite. My favorite line in the movie is when you turn to Dion and say, "Oh, I love you on Fox, by the way." Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "Oh, yeah. thank you." That's it's just. It's, yeah, there were a lot of fun little inside sort of jokes, a little wink at the cameras in this film, which I loved. And um, yeah, he, Dan, D Dion was great. Uh, and the guy, Dan, Dane Rhodes, when he was like, he was good. You could tell this guy's a good oh, he's actor. Amazing. Yeah. He, to me, Dane, Dane, you should see him in, in he's in a lot of movies. And yeah. he's one of those guys that you don't realize it's him because he's so different. Yeah. Every time you see him. And I don't mean just a lot of our movies. He's in a lot of movies in general. And uh, and to me, Dane is Dane is the same caliber as Russell Crowe. He's that when he wants to be a mean. I mean, he was in your face there. I Well, it was, yeah, it was comic, <laughs> but still it was like frighteningly. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> I've told him, I was like, I said, listen, you know, we're, 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 we're trying to move quick. I said, don't hesitate. Get right in my face. I, you will not make me mad. And he's like, copy that. And then like, <laughs> I think it was, oh! a, he was all up in there. I was covered in Dane spit. And uh, I was like, all right, it's lunchtime. <laughs> oh my God. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. He was great. So with that, we I have so all. many, it, be, be, because I follow you, John, on on Facebook now, I have so many random questions. So, and that's the thing about me is is we bounce all over the place. Okay, go for out it. Of He's all got ADD your, big time. Yeah, out of all your side hustles, I follow. And I was actually, I didn't get involved with it, but some of your fans actually got me mad when I would watch a video of you. Literally yeah. say, we have stand on it. We, we have poker on DVDs coming out. If you don't sign them, if you don't order it now, you're not going to get the signature. We're going to get backed up before Christmas. So today's the day you have to sign them. If you want them to be better, be, be, and you give a, a nice little speech and you walk around your place. Then right. I would look at the comments and the very, very next comics underneath was I ordered sand on it yesterday and uh, I didn't get it yet. And, uh, it's not signed, and I would get right. so mad. I would obviously wouldn't right. post anything. I always and, wanted and to I had, go. Uh -oh. but yeah, John, I I made such. I went through so many hoops to explain to people this is a pre-order. Yeah, the movie will not come out until Orange Friday, which in my world is the Friday after Thanksgiving, in honor yeah. of the General Lee, right? And all things right. orange. We're going to start. We're going to start Orange, orange Friday month. I mean, all that stuff. And people would say, I ordered mine yesterday and I didn't get it. Or I ordered it last week and I didn't get it. I'd say, I'm not finished with it yet. Yeah. I <laughs> wanted to jump on and defend you, but I I, I didn't. 
<laughs> but I did. Well, next time, come on, come on. Yeah, step up, Heffron. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's fascinating, and they'll call too. Some people will call the office and say, "Hey, I ordered and I didn't get it." Yeah. <laughs> now, but now we're at, we're on the other side of Orange Friday. The the great thing about all of those people is, as soon as they got it, they were like showing pictures on their Facebook yeah. and tagging me and all that, and saying, "I got it, I got it, I got it. It's great." Uh, we had one person watch it on a on a one day or a two day rental. They watched it like eighteen times. Yeah, uh, I noticed that at the end of the film. I mean, you do the outtakes, which is always great. Everyone loves outtakes, but you also had like I guess some of the fans that were sort of like given testimonials yeah. and cameos. That, yep. that one of them said, "I don't, you know, I've watched it." 18 or more she stopped counting how many times she'd seen Isn't it. that great yeah and then the, the very last one the guy said come on honey do it no no do it she goes yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just love it. it it's so great to be uh especially in this day and age it's so part to be it's so great to be part of one of the reasons why people smile so that's why it's so great what you guys do yeah. you make people laugh it's very important to laugh and uh, i uh, agree and stand on it with that. And yeah, of course. Yeah. So Stan on it did that and poker run does that you guys do it. And, uh, I'm, I'm just proud to be part of, of uh, what's good in people's lives rather than what's annoying. How was it for you during, I know there was a big flood that happened not long ago down there. Um, did that affect the studios much? Oh yeah. We had, um, we had a, a, uh, hurricane, hurricane Ida came right over the studio tore the house down where we did the green screen stuff with you, John. Uh, it, a big tree went right through that, uh, dented up one of our general Lees, our stunt car. And as we speak right now, that house that was my mother's house is gone. We, we had to demolish it. Oh. And we're putting up two, two uh, basically they're storage sheds. We're putting up storage sheds and that's going to be our new uh, Miss Shirley's, our new... Uh, uh, inventory and store and all that. So I'm very proud of the people here at the studio because with all these orders we've had for Poker Run, uh, there has been no store. So they've been doing it out of boxes that were in the caboose, the caboose set we shot in, mm -hmm. or the caboose that we shot in, uh, boxes in a shed, and and uh, they've done an amazing job at keeping up with all these orders because there's been th we've sold thousands of these of these movies already, and I'm I'm very very proud of that. We want to sell thousands more, of course. Uh, but but our elves, as I call them around this time of year, they're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And hopefully in a week, we'll have an actual uh, an actual sore looking store again, rather than just a, a, a kind of a, a yeah. back room for them to work out of. So uh, we've uh, we've done everything we can to make a chicken salad sandwich out of this mm -hmm. or lemonade. And I think mm -hmm. uh, I think we've done well. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, props to I believe it was your your mom that was the cook. I mean, she made some of the who was who was doing all the cooking. Oh, that's uh, that's actually my mother in law. OK, Miss Linda, Linda made a lot of things. Also, Alicia cooked a lot of a lot of stuff. And if, uh, if you remember, there was always a guy named named Kenyon and he's got a, a huge following his his uh, Facebook page is called Southern Boys Outdoors. And that's boys with a Z. He's got uh -huh. like three and a half million followers. So he doesn't need my help. But he was the guy that was boiling crawfish all the time. Oh, so he nice. cooked for everybody outside. He had uh, he was there for, I think, a week and, and cooking for everybody. So uh, Louisiana has has people who are very proud of their recipes and and uh, their pride is well founded. So I enjoyed uh, enjoyed having Kenyon there and Miss Linda. And I think Mr. Mike, that's my father-in-law. He cooked a couple of a couple of meals while you were here too. Oh yeah, I <laughs> picked out on spaghetti one night. I just ate myself right into a food coma. I mean, oh yeah, it was so good. Yep. No, I love it. They call that Kunas spaghetti. It's a very specific <laughs> Louisiana spaghetti. Uh, oh, a lot of times okay. it's with chicken, a chicken in a brown sauce, not a red sauce, in a brown sauce. They call that a roux, R O U X. Yeah, and I'm oh not. God, sure. I'm not so a cook. Good. I just eat. <laughs> I just eat. I'm not sure what a what a roux is. Although I guess it's the foundation of all things wonderful. Some other questions I have: Your sheds. Your sheds look so badass. But yep. I live on a farm in Michigan, 
if I get rape to drive a pickup truck to you and put one of those sheds on the back and drive it up to me, would that be possible? Sure. <laughs> okay. Look, believe it or not, I like those. I am, the, in, the, I am in one of them now. No, I'm impressed because I, I bought right before COVID. I move out of Los Angeles because I had this weird, crazy feeling of why am I paying so much in corporate tax? Why am I doing all this stuff? And I, right. and I fled California and I, I live on about five, 600 acres of, of farmland. John's been here. That's he was actually bad. at my house and he goes, you can hear bees on your front porch. I'm like, yeah. That's where yep. I live now. Yep. Uh, but I need a shed because the red squirrels have, I've lost my war against the red squirrels and squirrels. They've taken over one part of the shed and now I got to rebuild. <laughs> and your John Snyder sheds are really badass because they have that cool, um, I don't want to call them like farmhouse chic because that's very mineral paint box whiny, but they have that that cool look to them. They're very oh, yeah. white with, with black windows like yep. around them, uh, not expensive. I've been looking at sheds. No, they're, they're not, not expensive. expensive. And you can, uh, th there's a great website that uh, when you call up about them, it's called Bo, Bo Best Buildings yeah. or John Schneider Sheds. Yeah. When you talk to, uh, actually, you're probably going to be talking to Alicia, to my wife, and she'll get on a, on a computer with you and say, okay, where do you want the windows? Where do you want the door? Uh, where do you want another door? Do you want a sliding door? What do you want? So you kind of design it together. Yeah. Uh, and then click OK. And then the, the elves, the other elves are, are busy making sheds right now as we're sitting here. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then you wind up with it. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. They are right now as we are here. They're one of the sheds they're building is like this shed. This will be for Miss Shirley's. So they're doing that right now over in the uh, on the pad where my mother's house used to be. Oh man, I didn't know you get custom made John Schneider. Yes, of Shits, course. That's of awesome. Course you can. Oh, now yeah. I gotta have one. Well, you're gonna be going to pick one up. For okay, me. Well, I'm gonna get me one too then. Yeah, and then you're gonna swing I'm back up to Michigan, shed, John. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Schneider, tell Mr. Heffron, I mean, the whole property you have of uh, how many acres and like, what was it before you got it? I think this is interesting. Well, he's got 500 acres and he can hear bees mating on his porch. So I don't, I can't really <laughs> brag about it. We've got 150 acres and I can hear the grass grow. Right, right, right. <laughs> when the train, when the train's not coming, when the train's not going by the, uh, on the other side of the main road, I can hear the grass grow. But uh, yeah, we've got 150 acres. It was a uh, it was a YMCA camp for 60 years. Uh, it kind of fell into disrepair, and I I got a hold of it when I made a movie called Smothered. And Smothered has Kane Hodder in it, and Don Shanks, and Bill Mosley, and and uh, Malcolm Daynar, and on and on. And it's a horror comedy. So this place really lent itself to exactly what I needed. And after we made that movie, I, I figured, well, shoot, if I can make that movie here, I can I can make any movie I can think of here. So back in 2013, I purchased it. And then I met uh, my my uh, my lovely smile. I met Alicia in 2014 when she uh, hired me to do a movie she was producing. So since then, we've made 10 films and I think nine albums. Oh, wow. so we're wow. uh, we're pretty uh, we're pretty prolific in uh, in creating content, and we distribute it ourselves, which you know, John, because yeah. uh, because I don't I don't believe in complaining at the at the machine and then hoping you can get the machine to bless your creativity. Right. Yeah. So I I think if I'm going to bitch about the machine, then I I shouldn't want to work with them, and mm -hmm. I don't. So when I when I wiped the dust of uh, Hollywood off my boots back in 2011, I, I threw those boots away. Mm -hmm. um, so we do our own thing with our own friends, our own way. And uh, and we love it. And we sell thousands. We don't sell millions. Maybe we could. I mean, there's a certainly more than a million people who are aware of Dukes and Smallville and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, our goal is to is to get our sales up to uh, if we could sell a hundred thousand of anything, then we'd mm -hmm. never, we'd never have to ask uh, an investor for a dime again. Never. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. We, uh, Cause our movies aren't expensive, 
they're, uh, you know, half a million dollars. But I tell you what, if it's your half a million dollars, that's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Well, and there's some to be said with, I think, with COVID and all that and just where just private conversations, me and Reap had, and you're talking about the machine. I shot a comedy special for Netflix four months too late. So what happened was I shot a special. I paid about $100,000 to shoot it uh, in Irvine. Uh, my f- now four year old comedy special, uh, that's a hundred thousand dollars is sitting on this hard drive right here. Right. Uh, that's as far as it's made it in the world because Netflix stopped buying shows that weren't produced through Netflix. So you couldn't be just the random person who shot it. So Netflix went, no, nope, we're only going to have arena rock guys. We're only going to shoot people that we shoot it. So you kind of, kind of, sit here like that right then yeah. uh then i went i'm gonna put all my stuff on on all these streaming services and then that'll be how i'll get some of the money back and then you right. put all that onto spotify and i've talked about this last week on thing spotify just took all comedians um albums and just their their backlog off because spotify doesn't want to pay John, your internet is doing some ah uh, john pick up for me <laughs> can you, you see me can you see me, John Schneider? Yes. Hey, we're back. Okay. All right. Yeah, John's on. Uh, he's uh, he's so far yeah. out in the woods in Michigan. So why that don't he's... you put it on uh, on Cineflix? Put it on our put it on our streaming platform. Yeah. So Cineflix DOD, um, which means digital on demand, because that stuff on your hard drive, John, is digital. It's not video. I don't know why Hollywood calls it VOD. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. Right. Um, <laughs> so. We did a, uh, in 2016, we had planned an eight week uh, film festival, traveling film festival called Cineflix Fest. And when we did that, we, we went through the pains of creating a streaming service, which was Cineflix DOD, so that all of the independent films that were part of our film festival, uh, all of their films were available for people to watch. So they didn't have to come to the theater. We wanted them to, but you know, if they were a thousand miles away and couldn't, we wanted them to be able to see the content. So we did that. And, and uh, we had a flood that year. I'm going to tell you all that stuff. But we abandoned that after the eight weeks. It was like, OK, we've lost enough money here. <laughs> <laughs> right. we, uh, we don't want to do that anymore. But we maintained the, uh, the Cineflex, Cineflex DOD. So then later... When we realized, well, wait a minute, we don't we don't want to be on Netflix because they they have practices and policies that we don't agree with. Um, we wonder, well, is Cineflix still around? And thankfully, it was. We had kept up with GoDaddy or whatever it was, so we kept we maintained our domain, and now all of our movies are there. So we about two weeks ago we we let another movie in that was as a short film. That's a, about a terrible crime that is committed and the police rush in and they push the guy that pulled the trigger out of out of the way. And then they draw their weapons on this AR-15. They arrest the AR-15 and then try the gun in court. <laughs> it's a very quirky little odd right. movie uh, called Liberty Waning. Okay. And uh, so because of what's been going on in the news we put that movie up. Now, not very many people have seen it, but the folks that make it, you know, if, if you are on Cineflix DOD, then you are responsible like I am to make sure everybody knows where to go to get your movie mm-hmm. and tell them, look, if you want to support independent thought, you want to support independent art, get your lazy ass to Cineflix DOD and buy one of these movies right now. Buy my movie now. Mm-hmm. Uh, or... We're all just howling at the howling at the moon, and eventually we're going to dry up and go away, or we will have to, God forbid, compromise. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in compromise after fifty. I didn't care for it before fifty. Right. <laughs> oh man, so I love that. If you want, if you want your uh, your content on on Cineflix, we can do that, and then uh, I don't. I don't know. Now I'm afraid that if I talk too fast, that my internet's going to go. So I'm going to talk very slow. It's your fault. Time. It's your fault, John. It's uh, <laughs> but I think it, it's an age. Maybe it's an age thing. Especially I've been in comedy for 35 years. Reap's been in this where you just get where you go. 
that nowadays you can just create so much just on your own that you don't actually with podcasting now. I think, yeah. you know, people with successful podcasters reach more people than the most famous radio guy in the 80s. You used to have to do radio interviews or bad zoo morning shows. Uh, that industry is up to their nose in water drowning. It's all right. going to be voice track. There's nobody. Nobody cares about who's on in the morning and playing. It's just it's just going to be robots. And that's why I'm trying to get John to do our buddy flick. John Reap. He doesn't oh, like yeah. it, John. I'll tell you, John, it's it's about this 50 year old guy who's watching an antique road show, sees a toy. He got taken away from his third grade teacher and realized the teacher never gave it back to him. So he goes to find the teacher and says, where is my action figure? And then it's it's me and John. Where is my then, toy? Yeah. But what anyway. do you mean I don't like hey, it, John? I told you I liked it last time. I don't I don't know. I got some other ones. Yeah. I'm going to be working on you, Reap. Do you, hey, do, you, do, you have a, do you have a script, John? Do you have a script or just a... I have a script on that one. It's called Adult, adult Toys. It's a good. I have, have, uh, have a script <laughs> That's for that great. one. Yeah, it's uh, and they go on a quest to find it. And what happens is he reunites with all of his childhood friends because he gave one of these toys to all of his friends and he kind of wants them all back so he can make it together as as a set so he can sell it. So he's kind of a dick to everybody he used to be friends with because he's not being honest with them on why he needs them. Uh, so, I got to ask you, John. Did you do those, well, yeah. Did you do those? Um, what are they called? Like not not they weren't Comic Cons back in the seventies or eighties. I, I I would go to we we called them like Auto Ramas here yeah, in Detroit. World of, Wheels, World of Wheels. Did you ever do any of those? Oh, every weekend, all the okay, time. Okay, so I think I did meet you. Here's where I met you. I was a little kid. <laughs> I had an opportunity. I remember. And I, <laughs> I, and I'm not meaning this to. Be, I know it was you now, and I it, this it won't offend you because you're a grown adult man. So I was a little kid. The big Verners, Verners uh, ginger ale is huge in Michigan. If you if you have any type of cold, yeah. you you drink Verners. That's how I didn't get COVID. I just had Verners and ice cream, <laughs> and I was perfectly fine. The Verners <laughs> guy came up to me. Why I was trying to walk over to I believe where you were sitting, and my mom said, "Do you want his autograph?" And I was like, "It's the Verners guy." Kind of don't care. I know it's a guy in a suit. I want to go over there because Dukes of Hazard to, to me meant more than Dukes of Hazard. And, and I think it was people with my age because here's what Dukes of Hazard meant to me. Uh, my parents were divorced. So the weekends I would end up going to my grandparents' house. Okay. My grandma and grandpa would let me sleep on the couch. Was the av It was the equivalent of staying at a five-star hotel. <clears throat> okay. if, if she put a blanket on the couch that meant yeah tv all night even till you could watch tv till the star spangled banner starts playing and the birds flying so you could stay up all night and then so i associate uh you know dukes of hazard and i i, I don't remember the line if it was like love boat came on after i know it was a friday but there were just a row of shows and right. i knew that like you know by the time in the eighties, three's company came on. I was up too late as a little kid, mm -hmm. but, but Dukes of Hazard was just straight up right there. It, that was my partying for a Friday night on the couch. Grandma made cinnamon rolls. I'd watch it. And then I would norm my grandpa because every time I would crash the general Lee, right. I go, Shh. I'd land the general Lee and I go, bar, nar, 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 nar. like I would have to do the end commercial noise yeah. instead well, of yeah. the actual car. Car. I love yeah. It. I how love many cars? Um, uh, speaking of that, uh, John Schneider, how yeah. many cars did you guys total in the in poker run? Do you think? Oh gosh, probably probably eight or nine cop cars, and <laughs> yeah. uh, we only we only wrecked the one Challenger, the one my car. Yeah, uh, but that's the one that I, I uh, James had jumped in stand on it, so we fixed it. Okay, and then I jumped it again. It's still currently wrecked, but it runs. So I'm going to have it fixed again, and then I'm going to jump it in the next the next movie. And that one's that's going to be a big jump. It's probably going to be the end of that car. But uh, wow. so we have the only two uh, T top 
we call them Hellcat. They're not Hellcats. They look like Hellcats, but T-top Hellcat challengers really in the world. And I'm proud of that because I'm a car guy. That's why yeah. I did the wheels. Are you, I, are, you <laughs> are you are you are you currently shooting that now or when does that start? No, no. Right. We just got back from uh, Indianapolis. Um, we're going to start shooting that in March. OK. Uh, yeah. or, or maybe April. It might be that late because yeah. we we film in and around Bo's extravaganza. Mm -hmm. Right. Which happens for my birthday. Uh, this year, my birthday is April 8th, but this year we're doing our event the third weekend in April. So we'll probably shoot two weeks before that and a week after. So we'll, we'll shoot all around that block of time. Uh, February, we're doing a movie that uh, I haven't finished writing yet. So this is a great thing about the way we do it is I know we're doing this movie in February. It's called To Die For. It's a very serious film. It's about a, a Vietnam vet who has uh, survivor's remorse. Uh, who's 70 and he's uh, he's regretted that he had so many opportunities to die for his country and never did. Mm. So this is not a lighthearted, not a lighthearted film at right. all. And now he's still in his hometown. He's, he's still where he grew up. And every morning he, he puts his American flag on the back of his El Camino, uh, sings you're a grand old flag with his old dog gets in the car and drives uh, past his old high school to have breakfast with his police officer friends. Uh, well, now in this world, there's a, uh, there's a restraining order against him that says he can't drive his car with that flag on it within 300 yards of that school. Mm. Wow. And, uh, and, and the, the real irony there is that school, that building is where he learned to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm hmm. So this this is a movie about someone who is is perfectly willing and actually anxious uh, to die for his flag. Um, so that's the one we're going to make in uh, mid January through the middle of February. Wow! And then we're going to be back into to uh, Southern horsepower comedy. There and then so we'll do but adult. The great thing twice. About what I was saying is the great thing about the way we do this is that I know we're filming that movie. Now I've got to finish the script. Right. In the old world, in the old world, I would have a script that, that I would beg somebody out there to bless and I'd have to go, you know, blow the dust off. And I wrote it so long ago, I have no idea what it what the guts of it really is. Right. Uh, so now we're making things we can make a movie that is absolutely current and that movie will be out toward the end of summer in 2022, the year we film it. Wow. I thought wow. of uh, there's no machine in the way, you know, there's no, yeah. there's no BS in the way. Uh, and there's no, there's no committee of opinions that are not valuable that have to be valued. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. So, John, send him the script, dude. I know. <laughs> well, I, have, I have one called uh, Jimmy well, got jerked <laughs> that, uh, that I actually wrote. Uh, Tom Green and I were, were uh, friends. For, we're not, not friends now, but I haven't seen Tom in a while. But uh, I wrote I wrote a sequel, an unofficial sequel to uh, Freddy Got Fingered called Jimmy Got Jerked. <laughs> right. And uh, oh, boy, he thought it was hysterical. And then, you know, the world went to hell in a handbag. So, and Tom, uh, Tom ended up buying one of those uh, those vans, those like earth mover vans and lived the van life. Just drives oh, out but, into the desert and lives. Yeah. Does his Good own him. Yeah. video show podcast that way. Yeah. I love Tom Green as well. Why not? Well. We're, uh, well, his, uh, his manager or buddy is a dear friend of Alicia and I's now. And oddly enough, his name is John Schneider. And that's Rob's brother, John. Oh. So, so we talk to John a lot. And then I have another friend who's the, the uh, general manager of the Seattle Seahawks, whose name is John Schneider. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's we should crazy. have both of them on the show. Then everybody would be John. Dude, here's yeah. another idea. Not that you need uh, ideas to to make money, but looking at your facility, I've seen, I've watched a lot of the videos of you having your bow extended and and people showing up with their their versions of the generally. Right. Two questions. Uh, when I did morning radio, I used to do morning radio with me and Danny Bonaducci, and one of the, yeah. the the guy's a maniac. But one of the one things that he taught me is never eat fan food. 
So when people would come by our station with like cupcakes or cakes or something, oh. we'd immediately like toss it. But when I was younger, I didn't know. I'm like, oh, somebody made Rice Krispie treats. So do you live by that rule? Because I've seen people hand you food. It was your birthday and random people made you cakes. And it made me kind of wince to go, is he going to be nice and just taste it? Or is he going to go, this is very appreciative and set it over to the side? Um, do you eat uh, fan I'm afraid, food? I'm afraid I violate your rule and I will uh, and I you will ate occasionally it? eat <laughs> fan food. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will occasionally do that. People know me. They know I like honey. Okay. People will bring me honey. You know, that they've got bees. They'll bring me honey. Uh, for a long time, I talked about oatmeal raisin cookies, and, and people would bring me those. And uh, But I will say that I've never, I've never been uh, made ill by fan food. Okay. Well, and I have often been impressed by fan food. Um, <laughs> seldom disappointed. So... Well, maybe I, don't I have shouldn't. A personality, you know, Danny's personality. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> just might want to lace the food with something. Yeah, that's and what I mean. mean. Maybe I shouldn't. Get... I wouldn't eat Danny's fan food. <laughs> 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 but I think he could eat my fan food. <laughs> I know oh, me and uh, Reap were out on a birthday. Uh... I, don't, I don't blame him for having that. Yeah, too. I remember me and Reap were out on What's the second? Reap's birthday. Yeah. Uh, the second one. Oh, you have that that awesome facility where you can shoot stuff uh, on your thing. And you also do. And I had it pulled up and I'm sorry, I, I lost it. Uh, you also do a bunch of Hallmark movies, which is which is a, a total thing. I wasn't into them, but then I had a, a box wine once and now I get them. I have a Hallmark movie <laughs> generator. I can type in any name. Uh, and it'll print out a plot. But here's what I think you could do, <laughs> right? Like I typed in, okay, uh, John and this is Meredith. A famous country singer John said to marry a glamorous Hollywood actor returns to their small town roots when they cross paths with Meredith and their childhood sweetheart and blah, 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 and they figure out if they love each other. Here's what you could do on your studio. You have a lot of couples come through. You should set up a little green screen uh, have a two line script and let everybody be in a Hallmark movie. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to have that one moment where the guy can look at the, the his wife crying and goes, you don't need to cry. I know when your nose twitches, you're sad. I know when the sun comes up, you immediately think of grandma. Like you just have those moments and then you let people leave. I think That's there's some there. Idea. I think, I think there's something. Uh, there. I think that's a great. I can't call it Hallmark, though. I have to call it John Mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just a John uh, Mark. Yeah, Perfect. I think that's a great idea. With the and with the, it could be scored like you know. Scored. Like it, yeah, Alex it's just like a personalized it could be scored like that. And they have, and you have actors, or you just have them. Everybody wants to be in that scene, and they play it all the time. You're right. I think that's a great idea. Or so there you go. That's just have them jump the general leap. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So we could do yeah. that too. I think uh, I think that's a great idea. And John right. Heffern is General full. Lee, I'm going to do the General Lee one. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I just had a I just had a movie. It's a, a, a Lifetime Lifetime movie with Reba McIntyre that I think is still running. It's a Christmas movie, and and it's funny what you were just reading because there used to be a book that had it was like slug lines or 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 something. Yeah, and it had three. Wherever you opened it, if you read it from top to bottom, it was a plot. Oh, and it was great. Right, right. You know, an inadvertent <laughs> professor from Dartmouth winds up in yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Tokyo with a drug runner who really <laughs> right. wants to be a you know <laughs> right, right, right. Ballerina. Right. It was, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna That's try funny. to that book again. It was it was great. But uh, yeah, those movies, I, I enjoy doing those movies. Um, the, I've only done one in quite some time. They're just, they're just, they're just showing mm -hmm. because quite, quite honestly, people know that if, that if, uh, if I'm in a movie, people are going to like it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, and it, it's not because I'm great, but it's because I'm great at picking movies to do. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw one with you just randomly, I think, because we knew you were going to be on this podcast. I think the world kind of shows up. I was flipping through wherever I was performing last week, and you were at a campfire, and some guy was decided he's not going to leave his hometown, and your daughter was decided that they're, you know, everybody was happy. 
Everybody, everybody, right. everybody starts saying your Christmas carols. Yep, surprise. That's how surprise. every night yeah. should should end. That was every, uh, point point set is for Christmas or point set is something like that. Oh, that that's how the world should be with your family. You know, you're right. You're right. All right, John and yes. John and John and Look John. This. this is what I'm Look getting. I'm, I'm buying some uh, John Snyder sheds. I'm gonna get go watch. Shed. Get you a shed and fill it with John. Stand Snyder. on it. Yeah. Go fill it full of John Schneider movies uh, or download Cineflix. I mean, yeah, you can, all you have to do is I have an app. You have a podcast. I'm working on a podcast. In fact, I have it right here. Yeah. Oh, very I nice. have my podcast right yeah. here. Yes. Because <laughs> I got one of these. Uh, I got one of these little kits. That's what all this stuff is. So, yeah. So I'm going to do a podcast. Uh, I did my first episode yesterday. I'm not going to video it. Not yet. And it's called Don't Get Me Started. Oh, but the but the uh, what, where I was going 28 seconds ago now <laughs> was that I have an app. It's an app. It's free. It's called John Schneider. You can get it on your phone. Uh, it'll work on your uh, it'll work on your iPhone. It'll work on your your uh, Android, Android. It'll work and it'll take you to the music and the movies and the, the dirt track tour. It'll take you to every it's a stalker's best friend. OK, <laughs> it'll take you. It'll take you anywhere you want to go in a bunch of places you probably wish you'd never been, but it will, uh, it's, it's great. And that way you can buy the movies, you can rent the movies or you can get a hat or okay. you can watch John scene in, uh, yeah. in poker run, <laughs> which, you know, that's such a, such an important scene because when we made stand on it, people said, where's the Alfie scene where he, where he gets yelled at on the side of the road. So I said, just wait, it'll, it'll show up. Yeah. So rather, than, rather than put everything from Smokey and the Bandit in one movie, we're kind of, kind of uh, sprinkling little bits of uh, of stand on, or pardon me, of Smokey and the Bandit uh, in there. Like in Poker Run, I said, "I'm in my elephant now." Right? <laughs> yes. Right. And I, said, I had to get the elephant in here somehow. Yes. 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 So anyhow, guys, thank you. Before the before the podcast, fairies. Uh, yeah. Stop, stop us. Again. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. Have a wonderful holiday. John, I want to, uh, both of you, Johns, I want to, I want to read what you wrote about this, uh, this idea, because I think it sounds cute. Uh, uh, adult okay. toys, that sounds great. I'll send you, uh, Jimmy Got Jerked. Okay. Everybody <laughs> else, just listen to this podcast exclusively, except for when mine comes out. And remember, it's called Don't Get Me Started. So look, gotcha. I'm talking like this. this yeah, that's how you get to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, thank you, John. Oh, I only got this. <laughs> you take care. Let's cut this off before it cuts us off. This was a blast. You guys take care. Take care, Thanks, John. Buddy. Bye, everybody. Is... Take care, and we'll see you down the road. And uh, go to johnschneiderstudios.com. Get, get Poker Run today. Now. Yeah. yeah. There you go. John Schneider, everybody. Come on, John Heffern. Clap with me. Clap it in. Uh, clap, clap, clap. Oh, that was fun. The great John Schneider. Thank you, the Alan Jackson, for making all that possible. I mean, his internet was in and out, but that was a uh, pretty good, pretty interesting yeah. conversation. Um, I so many think, more John? to. to I, mean, ask, I think he, I think he'll probably shoot a movie. Make that idea, dude. <laughs> He's got the stuff, you know. I'll send it to him. He's got. Yeah. He's motivated, right? I mean, you go to that little park, just drive around. Yeah. Why not? What what else? We gotta eat. like you said, it only takes a day. How technical is your film? I mean, is it gonna be hard? Could it be done on the green screen? A lot of it, because that's what he does. There's a lot of green screen stuff. We could we could change it all up and say, because he's got a camp, right? So the whole thing of the movie is the kid has to travel all around to all these places to find these pieces. We could have them all at the camp. Right. Okay. So the whole deal is like there's kids at camp, and then the four of us grown ups have to infiltrate or infiltrate. How we say that word? Infiltrate, infiltrate the camp. Yeah. And then try to uh, find it. Okay. All right. Well, look. Let's think about it. Um, think he's about got it. the. He's got. He's seems motivated and willing to work and do all that kind of stuff. So, really? ladies and gentlemen, job. we weren't live, so we weren't paying attention to your comments at all because this is not live. Uh, we will be live next week. So uh, sorry if you thought this was live. <laughs>
Um, but this is, uh, we had to shoot this when Mr. Schneider was available. You know, he's a very yeah. busy guy, as you can see. So, yeah. um, any final thoughts, Mr. Heffern, before we wrap this no. puppy up? No, I was excited. I wish the, my internet was better. I was excited to talk to him. I mean, he was a yeah. icon of my childhood. Yeah. And dude does a lot of stuff. We didn't even get into his CBD <laughs> bath bombs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe next time. He seems like he's cool. And if he's doing, a, if he's got a podcast, he's, he's going to have a movie wanna... out every, every couple of weeks. Yeah. He'll want to push it. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll abuse his friendship as well. Start to make like a circle, like all these other comics yeah. do. We'll start a to have circle of abuse. Of it'll be like he'll be our Theo Vaughn that's okay. on all the time. Yeah, exactly. You I know like how those it. guys do it, how it's it's the same guys on same every guys. podcast. Mm -hmm. We're gonna create our own people yeah. that are just on us just all the time, like our own group. I love it. All yeah, right. Man. Well, look, everybody, I go to heffernandreap.com, be a Patreon supporter. Uh, check out our tour dates. We are on the road. Uh, maybe not. Let's see here. What day is it? As I'm talking to you, theoretically, today is the 20th of December. So Merry Christmas. Enjoy your Christmas week. New Year's Eve, I'll be at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. And John Hereford, New Year's Eve, will be in Raleigh at Good Nights. Yes. One of us there. Yes, I will be there Thursday. The Friday and then that weird ass show on January first because it's a Saturday, so they yeah. have you do comedy. So that one's gonna be odd. Yeah. So let's show up to that one. It's gonna be nice and easy paced. But right. if I can get the John Reap push to show up to Charlie Goodnights that weekend, then I don't have to listen to the owner bitch about how I don't sell tickets. So that's yeah. a good weekend if everybody can help show my up. Boy out. And then, uh, you know, John Heffern fans who are still in California, come show me some love in La Jolla. All right. Yeah. Here we go. And maybe we'll throw up one of these before Christmas. Maybe we'll have a very, very special Christmas. Okay. Episode. Yeah, we'll you don't know. Something. Yeah. Okay. All right, bro. Cool surprises over here. All, All right, right, John Heffern. Good to see you. Love Take you. Take care. We'll Take see you. Take us out. I'm posing like a, some sort of Marvel character who like kills you with peace. <laughs>